Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Hail and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast once again. Once again. Uh, coming up here, um, just a sh- couple of short days away, about, well, three short days away from the uh, the local heathen lesson, heathen class, I guess you might call it. It's more of a, it's a park moot, you know, it's a park meetup here in Murfreesboro at the uh, Case and Cason uh, Lane or Cason Trailhead Park, um, doing a doing a kind of a collaborative class, as it were, an outdoor class, uh, talking about the heathen worldview of death in the afterlife. We're calling it "Where in Hell <laughs> Do You Think You're Going?" Um, collaborating with Greg from Raven Moon Hearth, myself. Um, so, if you are in the area, close enough to. To Murfreesboro, want to make a little day trip. It's going to be this Sunday um, at 2 p.m. So check the description, check the show notes for the event details. Uh, if you're not the Facebook type, because there is a Facebook event for it um, with the address and all that. If you're not the Facebook goer uh, and you just need an address and you want to make it out, those details will be annotated as well in the show notes and uh, description of the podcast. So come out, say hi, listen to hear what we have to say. Um, about these very complex concepts um, that seem to get a lot of different, um, you know, views and opinions on, especially nowadays in modern times. There's there's all kinds of stuff floating around, but we're going to do our best to, um, with the time that we have that afternoon, um, focus on the uh, historical side of things, what information we have. Um, I, I'm not going to be recording it. So there's, it's not going to be one of these, you know, if you don't miss, if, if, if you don't show up to the event live in person, you're going to catch it later on in a, in a, a video or anything like that. I'm not going to have the, the means of, of recording for, for as, as long as we're doing this. Plus, it's going to be a bit more interactive. There's going to be more, um, you know, crowd work, as it were. We want people to participate. We want people to partake and be a part of it. So, um, yeah, hopefully you'll... Make a make a trip out and uh, say hi and see what we got to say. So that's something to look forward to. And it's it's also the day you know that that this this coming Sunday is uh, is when we do the stupid daylight saving time deal where um, you know we do we do it twice a year here in this part of the of the United States at least where in the springtime the the clocks move forward an hour which. Um, the day that that it happens, you know, we we lose an hour of sleep, so they say. I don't know how that's possible, but um, you know, because to lose something, you have to misplace it. So, where did you put that hour of sleep? Who knows? Um, but that's how it feels, I guess. Right? That's how people describe it as. You know, the you spring the clocks ahead, or you move the clocks ahead an hour, and you lose an hour of sleep. And then, in on the opposite end of the spectrum, on the uh, when daylight saving time ends, there's uh, we, we we set our clocks back an hour and we gain an hour of sleep that day. Again, it's a very weird concept, but um, it happens and, it, and it's a thing. So that that does put us in a uh, a frame of mind of getting more daylight. It's not even a frame of mind; it's 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 the perception, right? Because we're we're starting our days there thereafter at the same time of day as we normally would, but but the, the sun is, is, is visible longer. So, you know, more daylight hours to do more outdoor activities as the, the sun warms the earth and, and we get more springtime weather. So good times for that. Um, that'll mean that, you know, when I get off of work and I want to go down to the river for an hour or two or something, I can, I can do that and not have to uh, be concerned with, uh, you know, nighttime coming early. So, yay. You get to do all, all those fun things. Um, so 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 what are we talking about today guys? Um this is a I'm going to be a lot of 
uh, no, a lot, I know I know a lot of my my stuff that when I talk about things, especially of a heathen nature that has any sort of uh, backing that we can uh, refer to from you know historical sources, whether it be sagas or other skaldic poems or other medieval sources or anything like that, you know, um, uh, we we uh, like to refer to those things here on this podcast when and as we can. But this topic today um, is a bit more on the just personal experience side of things uh, because I think this topic is a personal one. Um, and so it's going to affect and, and, and be impactful different ways for different people. And so what I'm hoping is that, you know, by the end of this podcast, that, that we'll get a lot of comments, um, either in the comment section of the video on the YouTube channel, or, or we'll get some people um, responding to the, the question that's posted through Spotify. Um, or if you catch us on, on any of my other social platforms, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, if you want to comment your thoughts in the comment sections there, I'm hoping to get some, some, some discussion around this sort of thing. Um, but this uh, this topic kind of is a you know this is one of those things where I, I don't I don't have as as much of a a horse in this race as say a lot of other people. Um, but to, we're, we're talking today about um, reconnecting to the sacred, reconnecting to our gods, or, or or getting back in touch with the divine, as it were. Right? We can use those terms. Um, because we've lost touch with them or we or because we feel like we've lost touch with them or we've become disconnected with them due to challenges due to you know um strifes um whether it be physical um mental challenges things that that just plague various people in different ways um, or at least affect different people in different ways and uh, you know, so this 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 topic is is uh, due to a question uh, or a sort of question. It was it was a message that I received from a good friend of mine. He's been on this podcast a number of times. He was actually out here last year, came to Tennessee, stayed with me for the weekend, and was was in person with me on the podcast. And and Patrick Walsh, um, out there in Missouri, he's again he's 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 a great guy. You know, he's he's a good friend. Um, always has, whenever I talk to him, this, this, despite what is going on with him, you know, and some of the things that he may be facing, always has an upbeat attitude. Um, but he, he sent a message and I'm going to play a, a small segment of that message for you guys to hear what that question is. Um, and you know, he had asked about it being a post or, or a video maybe. So here we are. Um, but so yeah, so so this is this is um, I'm just gonna play it right now for you. So so here's what he has to say. Uh, it's like a a post idea or a video idea that I wanted to mention was you know try to rekindle that flame after stripes and afflictions via depression or any other circumstances that may arise. You know, I think that'd be a really cool video to post. Yeah, you know so disconnect when 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 we when we feel as 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 human beings you know when we feel disconnected from anything right i mean whether it's i don't want to hang out with my friends i don't want to you know go out and and be social uh you know we we, we this is this is not a, a very uncommon thing and, and again it affects different people in different ways you know so we're, we're going to be getting kind of visceral. Um, this might be, you know, your early trigger warning. You know, so we're going to be talking about things like mental health, um, depression, anxiety, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so if, if, if those are triggers for you and you'd rather not um, be a part of it, then now's your chance to turn this one off and, and tune in next week for, for a different topic. But, you know, he, he came up uh, or he reached out to me through this message, and, and uh, which I always encourage, you know, like, I've said this multiple times, you know, whatever way that you feel like you want to communicate your thoughts to me, if you are um, connected to me on my personal social medias and you want to send a voice message, I don't know how that function works on 
like your Facebook type platforms on, on, on the public profiles. But um, either way, you're, you're, you're more than welcome to send me a, a message through, through that platform. You can call into the podcast, which is a 24 hour hotline. Basically um, it, it goes straight to a voicemail. I, I listen back to them. And if it's, you know, something that can be added to this podcast, I do. Um, but that number is 615-671-9832. Um, and it, it is, it, it's a 24 hour, seven day a week. It's, it's always open. Um, I never answer. You'll, you'll be just leaving a voicemail so you can remain anonymous. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can do that. You can email me, MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com. Um, so that's just, you know, multiple ways that you can contact me. And I, I always encourage it. So I'm glad, you know, uh, Patrick and I have been friends for a while. So we, we talk almost every day, at least in some form or fashion. Usually it's just messaging back and forth on a, on Facebook. But it's, go, it's always good to hear his voice. Um, and, he, and he does. He, he asks some really good things. And I have to be honest, you know, like when I hear about stuff like this, I feel like I am the last person in the world <laughs> to be speaking about it because, um, I don't, I don't want to say I don't deal with these things because everybody deals with things in their life in different ways. Um, but I don't, I don't, I I don't know. I don't, I don't have as, as much of a problem with it. And again, I'm not using that word problem as like, it's a bad thing if you're dealing with it because it's not. It doesn't impact me as, as deeply or as heavily. And I think one of the things that is, is tough for, for some people um, to, to, to wrap their mind around is when somebody who doesn't deal with a certain thing, let's just use for the sake of this podcast and for the sake of the discussion, you know, let's, let's talk about um, things like anxiety, depression, um, uh, whether it be, you know, any sort of bipolar uh illnesses or other sorts of mental uh, health issues. Um, some people can maybe think that if, if you're not going through those things yourself, then you have no business talking about how to deal with those things because you couldn't possibly understand what that person is going through having not gone through it yourself. Um, and I've heard that many, many times. From, from many people, people very, very close to me. And I, so I, I'm very sensitive about talking um, uh, on, on topics that, you know, I, I don't have a very deep, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't speak from a place of experience, right? Um, and I think that, that oftentimes validates people, you know, so uh, if, if you're talking to someone who's going through the same things as you, there's that, you know, uh, relatability. So you can say, yeah, you know exactly what I'm going through. And so can you help me with these sorts of things? And I get that. Um, but suffice it to say, um, he did ask, um, and he did want to know about, you know, things that can help us reconnect or help him reconnect. And he was asking, you know, suggestions, ideas. And I admire that, you know, putting yourself out there, um, Patrick, and or anybody for that matter, just putting yourself out there making yourself vulnerable in this way and asking for help instead of trying to just, you know, push it down, maybe bury it back deep in, in, in the, you know, confines of the the deepest, darkest corners of your minds and, and not facing it, not dealing with it, that, 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 that can definitely do more harm uh, than good, you know, repressing those things instead of dealing with them, uh, I think head on or, 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 you know, facing them up front. Uh, I, you know, so so hearing somebody put themselves out there and becoming vulnerable like that, it's 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 admirable. Um, so I do just want to say that to begin with. So again, this podcast is not going to be surrounded about you know well, what does the sagas say about this sort of thing or how did our ancient heathen ancestors do this? Let's look at some source material. Um, I don't know of anything that that could even cover this sort of thing because by and large, this topic is is. While, while, you know, things of this nature haven't become, you know, brand new, like this is stuff that I'm sure uh, humanity for, for a very, very long, long, long period of time has had to deal with in varying degrees. Um, but but the, 
talking about it and, and facing it and actually treating it. You know, back in the medieval times or, or even not so long ago, you know, maybe in the last 100, 200 years, you know, usually people that dealt with um, any sort of mental illnesses um, or other sorts of things were, were looked upon as being um, touched, right, or possessed or, or, or having things that required some uh, extreme form of, of, of treatment. Um, and, and it wasn't approached or, or dealt with holistically um, up until more or less very recently. Um, so I would hate to have to go back and, and look at, you know, or, or try to dig up anything of, of, a, of a historical nature that said, you know, how was this dealt with? Because it's probably not pretty and we, and we, and we don't want to revisit that, I don't think. <laughs> I think we want to look at modern um, medicine and, and other ways of dealing with these types of things in, in a more holistic and, and helpful sort of way. Now, I will say, though, that I think that the dynamic has changed a lot. There's a lot more going on nowadays that can feed this uh, or feed varying uh, degrees of, of mental illness. You know, there, there's all sorts of things that can trigger uh, responses from people. Um, and there's a lot more going on in this world now than what was going on, you know, back in the day. And what I mean by that is all these distractions, all of these so-called modern conveniences, all of these, you know, ways to make life seemingly more convenient and helpful um, that, that often backfire, right? So social media is a big one. I've, I've, I've alluded to some of this in other podcasts before where I've talked about how there's, there's definite benefit to having things like this, podcasts and, and, and social media platforms that allow people who with a voice to speak and, and share their thoughts and ideas and, and be heard by a vast audience, you know, of, of hundreds, if not thousands or more people across the world. And that can be a good thing. And it can also be a very terrible thing and a damaging thing, you know, because um, people are cruel. And when they are protected, as it were, uh, by anonymity, or when they don't have to face someone and look someone in the face, they can, they can say whatever they want. You can do whatever you want. Um, and, and speak in any sort of way behind a keyboard, behind a computer screen, behind a camera, and and have little to no consequences for your actions. Um, I've even been accused of this by by some of the content that I've posted out here, where it's like, yeah, you wouldn't say that to their face. I'm like, bet, you know. Um, I've said things to people's faces before. I've, I've I've called people out on their things. I've I've, you know, you know, my background. Um, uh, from a professional, you know, uh, angle, has has conditioned me to face confrontation and and deal with it. You know, when you can de-escalate, um, but when the escalation is impossible because it's 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 gone too far beyond that, then the only way that you are able to, uh, to, to address the situation is to, is to confront it head on and to run basically into the fire. And I've been conditioned for that for years. So no, um, you know, having a voice, um, having a platform to speak, I, I speak my mind and I speak it um, with, with consideration of, you know, what those ramifications are. But I, I, don't, I don't say things behind a camera that I wouldn't say to someone's face, you know. So when I say things about, you know, Odinism or, or, or whatever. It's like, yeah, no, but best believe I'll, I'll say that to anybody's face. I'm not going to sugarcoat it or, or pussyfoot around the topic just because they're in front of me now. Um, but anyway, go, that's, you know, going a bit off topic. Um, having, having these platforms as, as a source of uh, enjoyment, you know, but again, people can, can take advantage of it. And, and all of these things, this is just one example of, of ways that, you know, our minds can be so inundated and so overwhelmed and saturated with just nonsense and bullshit, you know, um, whereas back in the day, you know, we didn't have these things. Sure, there might be television or whatever. I'm talking like even before all of that, where, you know, your, your, your free time was spent 
either resting in between work that needed to be done or you were constantly doing something to keep your homestead um, up and running because again it was it was you know if work wasn't done then then you didn't eat you didn't have shelter you didn't you weren't protected from the elements you didn't have all of the things that that we as a modern society for the most part tend to take for granted we 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 flip a switch we've got light we turn a faucet on we've got water we're cold we turn up a thermostat we're hot we turn down a thermostat you know, we're hungry, we open up a refrigerator or a cabinet, and there's a slew of things available to, to us for the most part, right? The, again, just the modern, di- the dynamic of things have changed. So we've got all of these things that have, that have really helped in terms of advancing a society, as we think of it, um, as, as being more, you know, carefree or, or, or having a better quality of life. But I think in the interim, we've lost the sense of what that quality of life really means. Have we really improved our, quote, quality of life? Or have we just given ourselves more toys and more conveniences that have allowed us to disconnect and become disconnected with what is truly important? So thinking of it along those lines, right? If, if we look at, or, or when I, I should say, look at um, the way life was, you know, a couple hundred years ago even, and, and, and much earlier than that, you know, we talk about like the Viking Age or before thousands of years ago. Um, so much about how life was, the quality of life, again, it, it, it mattered the things that you did, like you had to do all these things, you had to tend to your crops, you had to make sure you're, you know, you had a good thatched roof, that your walls were secure, that you're, you know, had enough wood to last you for the winter to keep your warm, your, your house warm, and all these various things, right? But aside from that, aside from the physical doing of these things, these people had a very dependent attitude upon on, or on the sacred, on their divine, on their gods, and on the, the spirits, the Vatir, one of the topics you know that we just talked about last week and, and last the last podcast, the land Vatir, these spirits that cohabitate in and around us, these people had a very connected and deep uh, appreciation, adoration, veneration for them because they felt that without them, they would suffer. Their, their quality of life would 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 be less you know they would not have good crops so they didn't want to they didn't want to upset and they didn't want to make anyone mad you know when I say anyone I'm talking about like the gods they didn't want to upset the gods you know and it wasn't so much out of fear of consequence yeah but I think it may have was it wasn't like fear I'm afraid I'm deathly afraid I think it was more of a, again a, a healthy veneration of keep them happy let's stay connected to them let's do all of the the right things that we should be doing based off of our traditions, off of our cultural and, and, and regional traditions that we know are keeping our gods, whatever names they put to them as, um, satisfied with us and, and, and in their favor. And this goes across multiple cultures, right? Like this is not a foreign concept um, across any cultures uh, and religions even. So I think one of the, one of the things that we have to face, you know, that, that, we, that we can't avoid is why are, why are people feeling disconnected? Um, and is, is it really due to this, uh, you know, I kind of say, is it really? I mean, it definitely has to do with, you know, some of the things that Patrick was mentioning, right? Just the, the, the strifes, the trials, the, the challenges of having different, whether it be physical or, or mental um, uh, maladies, maladies, yeah. Um, but is the other contributor the fact that you know we've got these you know these phones these these electronics these these all these things that that take our focus away from doing things that kind of force us to get back and, and connected to the gods and how do we connect to the gods i've talked a lot about this in the past too as well uh connecting to the divine connecting to the sacred connecting to nature right because no, you, you know, you want to get, uh, call it, you know, fluffy bunny woo-woo, you know, uh, heathenry is a nature religion, and it, all paganism is a nature religion. I mean, yeah, the the, the, the importance of nature is, is definitely there, but heathenry definitely has a a, a very high import, importance on that which is holy, that which is sacred, 
you know, there's there's plenty of accounts. Um, don't remember the name of the saga, um, but there it's a Skaldic poem. Um, I'll find it and I'll, and I'll annotate it down in the in the description for you guys to look at. But there's it is a particular saga of this um, this this. Uh, He was like a scald or, or 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 a muse or something. He was an important guy. He he was he he was under the employ of of a, of a king, more than one king actually, several kings. Um, and he was going to, he was on some sort of official errand. You know, so he's 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 hanging out in the king's court. And he's doing what he is supposed to be doing there, and then he's been sent, he sent out on this errand to go uh, talk to a a Jarl or, or somebody. Um, and he, and along the way, I believe this was in Sweden too. Um, along the way, he's, he's looking for shelter. He's looking to, for places to stay. And, um, three different times, three or four different times, you know, he comes to somebody's house, gets denied, goes to another place, gets denied, goes to another place, gets denied. He's getting turned down left and right. Um, because at this particular time when he was traveling was during alpha bloat. Um, it was a winter nights um, celebration, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, that time of year. But anyway, it was it was an alpha bloat celebration, and it was explicitly forbidden for outsiders that weren't part of the family, part of the clan, to be there. And uh, there's there's a a statement made in in one of the the verses, the stanzas of the saga that that you know the woman that answers the door tells him to go away, calls him a bunch of names, one of which is you know you're you're. Uh, something like a filthy Christian or something like that, because he was, he was, he was a Christian, you know, he wasn't heathen, um, and again, I may be mis misconstruing things, so don't take my word for it, I'm going to leave the information down in the description and, and in the show notes for you guys to find the saga itself, um, but she says, you can't come in here, you're not heathen, and you're not going to, we, we fear the wrath of Odin, we don't want to piss him off or, or, or do anything that's going to ruin what's going on here. We are, we are celebrating our alpha bloat and you are not welcome here. You know, so, um, there's, there's definitely, <sighs> that's, that's crazy. I'm, I'm over here just rambling on about a saga and I lost the track of where I was going with it and why, um, go figure. But the point being is, is I'm sure if I'm going to rewatch this and be like, yeah, Jesse, you know, get a hold of yourself here, man, uh, and you're going to you know be listening and watching. But anyways, uh, the, you know, the, the the point being is these people were connected to their gods, to their ancestors, to to all the various um, spiritual bodies um, that 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 they believed in, and they were so devoutly connected to it. And, and to that to those traditions that they would refuse to, to to sway and they didn't allow you know just anybody to, to come in and, and ruin that um, we've lost that now and today I think a lot of I think a lot of people um, and I've been guilty of this myself too you know in the spirit of hospitality in the spirit of wanting to be just universally welcoming and open to anybody and everybody, you know what is that actually doing for the well-being for for our spiritual health for our for for the well-being of how we connect with the gods are we being too open and are we being too hospitable as it were to just anybody and everybody are we keeping up those safeguards are we guarding ourselves and our nearest and dearest to prevent nefarious and unwanted things from infiltrating um our our space now you can literally you know, you could put that in the literal sense, you know, um, opening your home to people, letting just anybody and everybody come over because, you know, you're lonely and you want to hang out. Um, or you can take it to another level and allow and, and, and say, are you allowing people into your heart, into your mind, into your space, into you yourself? Are you, are you, are you being too hospitable, too welcoming, too open? Are you too just universally accepting because of reasons, you know, and again, it, it's, it's not that that could be the reason why, or that it is the reason why, but could it be a contributor as to why some people are feeling disconnected to the gods? 
or disconnected from the gods and, 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 and how to rekindle that connection, how to, how to breathe new life into those fires. You know, I've, I've talked about it before, you guys. I'll probably sound like a broken record, but, you know, I've said it before. Hey, get your feet barefoot, anchored, connected, and grounded into the earth. Even if it's just for a few minutes a day, you know, put your feet on bare earth. Get out of your shoes, get out of your socks, get out of your house, get out of the pavement and put your feet on earth. Get out back into nature, right? Doing all these things which in the moment, for the moment, can and have been proven to really be beneficial to physical health, mental health, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna allude that to that right now. I'm just gonna say, hey, don't forget those things. But the religiosity of it, the the how we're practicing our heathenry or our paganism or our 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 ways, you know, are we just is the reason that we've become so disconnected with the gods is because we've not safeguarded their presence when they are near or when we want to be near with them, when we create sacred space, when we um, either, you know, do whatever we do in our, in our individual cultic practices, the things that are sanctimonious, you know, that there's sanctity involved there, there is, there should be privacy, there should be, you know, limited view of the outside world to it. And I've had to think about this too a lot myself um, over, over time. You know, um, I, I look to, as a, as, a, as a content creator, you know, and as a, as a someone in content creation, um, I feel like there's a, 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 an obligation for me to share maybe a bit more than what I would be in, inclined to share. And um, I've had to really rethink that and put some, ask the hard questions, you know, are, you know, what is more important? Is it maintaining the integrity of your sacred space and being connected to, to the divine and the gods in my way? Um, is that more important or is it more important for me to post a picture of something that, you know, gets, you know, X amount of reactions, X amount of likes, X, X amount of comments, you know, people love it. People enjoy it. I appreciate the engagement. Again, it's kind of like the name of this game. You know, you got to do things that people enjoy and that people like. Otherwise, you get buried under the the minutia um, of, of every other, you know, Viking wannabe brosa true dude with a Mjolnir that he bought off of Amazon type. Um, so, again, as I was mentioning before, like I may not be, I may not be subject to the same feelings of depression or or, or anxiousness or, or anxiety or or any of the other things that that really have a have a a hold of people, you know. Um, I can empathize because um, I want to, I don't, I, you know, my wife is one of those people who, who, who battles with a lot of these things and, you know, it, it hurts me to see her hurt in that way and I wish I could just take it all away and I can't really relate. I can't sympathize because I don't experience that in the same way. Um, but again, going back to, you know, Patrick's deal, um, or Patrick's question, I should say, and what he was, what he was asking for suggestions on is, you know, uh, what can we do to get that reconnection when things like depression, anxiety, mental health take, take its toll on us, and that is the thing that is causing us to feel like we're disconnected with the gods. Again, I, I, I want to go back to, um, is it, is it that, or is it just a symptom of it, you know, like that's, there, there, there's things going on that maybe you're overlooking. Again, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the best person I feel to, to talk about this because I, I can't come from a, a place of experiencing the same thing. So my feedback and, and my discussion around it is going to be based off of just things that I know and the things that I've personally felt. So you know, maybe the the disconnect from the gods is, is is because we've allowed ourselves to just be a bit too frivolous with our time and space and energy. And maybe we just need to lock it down a little bit more. Maybe we need to put up those 
safeguard. Maybe we need to keep the gates a bit more guarded, you know, and, and, and not, you know, welcome in people, welcome in energy, welcome in uh, things that could be entropic to what we're trying to build um, or destructive in what we're trying to maintain, you know. Um, yeah, one of the other things that Patrick had mentioned to me um, in a separate message was, um, and I can relate to this too, is, is the use of substances to either enhance or embellish upon the feeling of, of this, uh, you know, connection to the sacred, right? And I know that there's plenty of, of um, substances that can be consumed, right? This is one of them, alcohol, um, cannabis, um, and, and other sorts of hallucinogenic or, or psychoactive substances that can put us into a frame of mind, into a state of mind that makes us feel like we're, we're, we're more in tune with, with the sacred and that we're more connected. I want us to all be cautious of that because that is not necessarily what is happening. You know, yes, you're going to, your, your, your emotions are going to be maybe more uh, in tune to, to feeling certain feelings and that can be masked or, or disguised as a feeling of connection to the divine. Um, but uh, I think for the most part, if, if, if consumed hazardless, hazardously or haphazardly, um, then all you're doing is just, you're just getting bucked up. You're not, you're not doing anything ritualistically to, you know, put you in a state of mind that gets you closer to the gods or that reconnects you to the gods. If anything, you're doing the very thing that, that keeps you disconnected from them in the first place. Um, so be careful with it, I would say. Be careful with it. I've been guilty of it. You know, I've been guilty of that um, plenty of times. Um, and uh, we, we, we have to be careful. Um, you know, the world is a, is a dangerous place um, when it, on and offline. Uh, but as I mentioned before, you know, when, when you get out here and you start um, putting, your, putting your face, putting your voice out here for the world to see, um, you have to tread carefully. I have to tread carefully. We have to tread carefully. Um, because it can consume us, you know, whether it's a, you know, uh, somebody's message or somebody's comment or, 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 or reaction that we get, you know, things that kind of stroke our egos, that uh, give us some sort of validation, I guess it kind of goes hand in hand. Like you have to, you have to have a bit of an ego um, to to want to do stuff like this. Like I mean, I'm just gonna be real. Like if you're not the type of person that wants to talk to nobody, essentially in the room and, and just stare at a camera and speak for an hour or longer, um, you gotta have a bit of an ego to want to do that. It's like you know that 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 old saying. I'm not just listening to hear my. I'm not. I'm not just talking to hear myself speak. Well, right now in the moment, I am talking and I'm hearing myself speak. You know, there's in the moment, it's it's it, it's that. So is it a bit egotistical? I think there has to be like you have to there. there there is part of the ego that is it is OK to to feed, um, uh, you know, but it's it's again, it's it's a fine line. And the more you you feed that ego, the, the, the more chances I think we run into of being overtaken by it and then we're off on this trying to figure out well, why do I feel disconnected to the gods well you kind of brought yourself there buddy you know you kind of took yourself out of the equation you you overshared you 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 made what was a sacred thing to be just open to the world and um that that could be you know uh, a, a, a big reason why People are, are feeling disconnected. So there's the problem, right? We, now what do we do to solve it? Like there, we, we, we figured out potentially. I'm not going to say we did figure the whole problem out because, again, this is such a complex thing. It affects different people in different ways. But here's yet another thing to consider. Um, so 
that's a problem, right? Opening things up too much. Well, what do we do to solve it? How do we rekindle the fire? Rekindling the flame, re re breathing new life back into that dot those dying embers, maybe. Well, let's lock it down, people, right? Let's shut the windows a bit. Let's close the doors. Let's regroup, recalibrate, you know, make those course corrections. I mean, I look at it in a way as as navigating through the sea, navigating through the land. I'm gonna actually bring up a very um I'm going to bring up a real life scenario that happened to me last week. All right. You want to talk about making course corrections. Um, I went on a hike in Savage Gulf, um, which is in Grundy County, Tennessee. It's, it's, it's a vast network of trails, like 40 something miles of, of, of different trail heads and, and, and loops and stuff that you can go on. But anyway, I went on, I went on a, a, a about a 10, almost 10 mile hike um, with my Thule. His name is Patrick also, different Patrick, but um, great guy. Um, and we were coming up out of the Gulf, you know, so the way the trails are, you can, you can take different paths to, to reach different points of interest. Um, and we took a particular trail that, that it brought us down into the Gulf you know, so so we descended into this lower area. There's a big creek. So that's what's called Big Creek. And then to get out and back to your cars and stuff, you now have to ascend the gulf. And it's basically just a two-mile uphill rock climb. Very, very tough. Um, very physically demanding. And throughout one point on this two-mile trek back up, there was, I think, maybe about a mile left in the hike. I was... First of all, those last two miles were, were, were brutal. It took me way longer than it should have. I was, my legs were cramping up. It was, I was hating life big time. I was like, fuck all this. I, you know, never doing this again, la, la, la. Well, again, about a mile or so left of the, of, of the hike, I'm, I'm basically by myself because Patrick had made his way way up ahead of me and uh, I lost the trail, which you might be thinking, how do you lose a trail? Well, you lose a trail when the trail markers are laying down instead of standing up and you're not familiar with the area. You've never been there before. It's not like there's traffic lights and road signs out here telling you where you need to go. It's, 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 it's a white piece of metal stapled to a tree or nailed to a tree. And when that tree blows over or falls down, you know, you're... So a situation like that happened where I, I lost the trail and I got off trail. And, you know, here I am, several miles deep in the woods, can't hear anything except the creek. There's no other people out there. Um, it's mid-afternoon. I'd say early afternoon, maybe at that point in time. Um, but I, for all intents and purposes at that moment, I was lost. And the reason I'm bringing this up is course corrections, right? If I would have kept going in the direction that I was heading, I would have landed way, way, way off trail, farther away from where I needed to go, already wore out, tired, and hurting, it would have been bad. It would have been really bad. So what did I do instead? I realized that I was off trail, that I had been off trail now for probably a few hundred feet, trying to find my way back. And I realized if I keep going in the direction, if I, if I don't stop and correct myself, if I don't figure out where the problem is and find out what to do to fix it, um, I'm going to dig my hole deeper and I'm going to, you know, potentially put myself in a really bad situation. So you stop, or I stopped rather, sat down, got my breath and said, all right, well, I know that I've been walking in essentially a straight line. What I felt was a straight line. I looked behind me and I saw some things that I knew that I crossed over and I retraced my steps. I went backwards, found the trail again, got back on the trail and eventually made it out of the Gulf, you know, complaining and hurting every step of the way for the last, you know, mile, mile and a half or however long it was. My point being is these course corrections, these, these, these points there where we are realizing something's going askew, if we don't stop for the moment and figure out what needs to be done to correct it, if we just say, well, I'll figure it out as I go, 
you could be going further and deeper down into the into the hole and and then you're you're you may never find yourself back out and then or 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 the way out is going to be much longer and much more arduous and much more challenging than it had it than it would have been had you just stopped figured it out made your course corrections there and then maybe if you have to go back a little bit then you go back a little bit you know as i said before i had i had to go backwards i i went forward too far and then i had to go backwards but that backwards travel put me where i needed to be i needed to retrace my steps i needed to revert back to where i was before i started going off course so you know we talk about this all the time paganism heathenry right all these things it's a path it's a journey we're on this journey where we're walking along this path well guess what sometimes you may get off trail and you may need to backtrack a bit and get back to that place where you wandered off from and figure out some things or maybe you need to figure out some things over here off trail before you get back on the trail to continue on your journey and continue on your path it's totally okay and then a lot of times I think that's what people are missing they're just like well I'm just going to keep you know hacking and slashing my way through this jungle well you know you could be just putting yourself deeper into a a, a web of vines that you'll never find yourself out of and then it's you know it's it's going to be um you know, you're going to be bogged down, tied down by all of this tangled up mess, right? Sometimes just stop, just pause, correct what needs to be corrected there, take a few steps back, and then move on your way, get back on the trail. It's okay to venture off trail a bit. I mean, to that point, about five or six miles into Patrick's and my hike uh, through Savage Gulf, you know, we hadn't quite made it down into the Gulf yet, but we were, we were making our way down there. We, we, we looked to our right and we saw off trail, you know, about 30 meters or so, uh, this just giant boulder. And when I say giant, I mean, it was like the size of a house in the middle of these, of these woods. And, you know, the sheer size of everything out there comparatively was like, you know, these things have been here for thousands, if not longer of years, right? Thousands of years, millions of years, maybe even. And, uh, here we are standing on the same ground and it's, and it's, it's humbling and it's and it puts you in puts things in perspective. But again, that that boulder was off trail, and he thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could climb up that boulder and and leave some gifts to the vitir? Because this boulder is again as big as a house. So you know, the very top of this boulder that we're looking down on was probably a good fifteen or twenty feet above ground, down the side of this mountain. So we went off trail. <laughs> scaled down the side of this mountain, climbed up this boulder, laid up there for about 15 minutes to relax and have a small, you know, private ritual, as it were, do our little thing, and made it back on trail. So it's okay to venture off trail to, to figure out some things. But if you, if you know, if you've, if you've ventured so far off that now you're getting, you know, your feet are falling into rock holes and, and, and you're, the uh, the thorns are grabbing a hold of you and things are starting to become dicey. Maybe maybe you took a wrong turn. Maybe you made the wrong step. Maybe it's time to stop, get back out, figure things out before you move on. So there's some, there's some physical things <laughs> that happened to me this past week that you could interpret and, and put into a, 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 you know, a lesson, as it were, a life lesson, metaphysical uh, aspects. And, and, and if it applies, then, then, then boom, there you go. So rekindling things, um, though, you know, to rekindle that connection, I feel can oftentimes require us, require us to retract a bit, correct the course, figure it out before we move on. Don't just keep blindly going in on things just for, for the sake of, oh, I'm on my path. I'm on my journey. I'll figure it out along the way. Yes. But sometimes we fuck up along the way, and sometimes we got to unfuck ourselves, right? So there's my suggestion. <laughs> there's my bit of, of advice that I have no business giving because I don't come from a place of, of experience on, on things of what Patrick is dealing with. But maybe the way that I think of things, it could be applied for others, and uh, maybe the things that you're dealing with um, cause I'm sure everybody that listens to this is, deals with things differently their own way. Everyone's an individual. 
you know, so there's going to be some people that can definitely relate to what Patrick is saying. And then there might be other people like myself who maybe can't or, or, or don't have the same degree of, of appreciation for it. And that's okay. Um, but that's what I've said. This is what I've said. This is where my thing is coming from. And uh, so, you know, keep doing all the things, right? Put your bare feet in the earth. Go for nature walks. Do those things. They will. They make you feel better, at least for in the moment. I've, I've never gone outside, walked barefoot in the ground, gone on a nature walk. I've, even when I did that 9, 10, 11 mile hikes, you know, when I do those hikes with Patrick, when I come back and my, my legs are killing me and I'm cramping, you know, from, from using muscles that I don't normally use and I'm tired, I still feel invigorated. I still love the feeling of it, uh, despite the pain of it. There's no nature walk that I've gone on where I came back not feeling better than before I started. So there's that, right? Don't neglect it. Even if it's just a small park near your area, anything is better than nothing, you know? And then this other stuff that I'm talking about, right? Disconnect from the digital stuff. Put your phone away. Get off the computer. Stop watching the videos. Stop watching the movie. Stop, you know, and, and do something of a, maybe of a, of a, of a more wholesome nature that, that, forces you to get back in touch with why you feel connected to the gods in the first place. What was it about that first time that you held ritual? What was that first experience like for you that, that drew you to this and that inspired you to be there and to continue on that journey? You know, retrace your steps, go back to that point. And then feed that area and then figure out, ah, oh, okay, I need to turn this off. I need to shut this down a little bit tighter. I need to close these doors. I need to open that window. I need to tie this shoe. I need to loosen this belt, right? Find those things that you need to correct, those course corrections. Recalibrate, you know? If substances are going to be a part of that equation, be careful with it, please. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a, a shaman, and I'm not a an advisor on such matters, so... Um, before you get into that, find someone who is, find someone who can be a, a guide for you, um, with things of that nature. You know, I'm, I've been fortunate enough to partake of things with shamans, you know, with, with, with people who are trained to guide it's invaluable. It's, it's one of the best things I think that people can experience uh, with the right, uh, you know, under the right circumstances and, and, and with the right application. Um, but don't be reckless with it. Don't just think that you can be your own guide. Um, unless you are, unless you are the shaman. And <laughs> uh, who am I to, to say otherwise? Who is anybody, right? So anyway, um, that wraps it up for me today, I guess, guys. Um, I said it wasn't a lot of historical stuff, but here I was actually finding a way to fit in something from a saga about how, you know, outsiders weren't welcomed during Alpha Bloat and were actually turned away because they didn't want to anger the gods. And that translated back to me saying, well, these people actually had a sense of what is holy and what is sacred and how it should be venerated how it should be treated with reverence and respect uh, to the to the degree that you know you won't you're devout in that practice so if it fits right if it works um, think about it I'm not saying if you're not doing this you're wrong um, I'm just saying that maybe this is maybe this is really what's going on maybe it's not the anxiety, maybe it's not the depression, maybe it's not the the, the issues that you're um, dealing with per se. Maybe it's the fact that there's just other things going on, and these are the symptoms of it. Maybe big, maybe emphasis on maybe. Again, not a doctor, not a professional. Don't come from a place of experience talking about this. So, please, you know, take it all with a grain of salt and 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 see how it fits. But I am genuinely curious to see what you think about this. So, as I mentioned earlier, if you have thoughts about it and you want to share, comment down below, email 
the podcast. It's MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com. You can call in. It's 615-671-9832. Leave a voicemail. You can message me on the social media platforms that I have as well. Um, any which way that, that works best for you will be fine for me. Um, don't forget to check the Linktree link that's annotated in the show notes of this podcast and in the description of this video. It contains all of my social media platforms and all the ways that you can monetarily support what I do. Um, I, as of right now, I don't charge subs, uh, for subscriptions on my podcast, and I don't foresee myself doing this because it's it's that's not what this is for. But time is valuable for all of us. So if you want to show your appreciation for the time that I spend doing these every week and you want to toss a coin or two, then check the link true link for all the ways that you can do it. There's merchandise, there's a couple donation links, there's uh, Patreon, there's other sorts of things. So check it all out down there, see if it fits you. At the very least, please like this video if you did enjoy it. Um, share it around, comment down below, engage in all of those sorts of ways because it helps keep this con content being shared. The algorithm figures out that it's of interest to people um, and it helps the channel grow. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed today's episode. Thank you so much to my patrons on Patreon that support me in this way each and every month. You guys are awesome, all of you. Um, and thank you to Patrick for sending this in and, and asking about it. I hope this has helped. In the meantime, and until we talk again, may the gods continue to notice you and may your